week, Kelly. Well, there are some things we do know about the risk of severe disease with COVID-19. Of course, that it increases with age and with underlying conditions. But there are also instances where it seems to strike people who are seemingly very healthy and young. For example, NBC contributor Dr. Joseph Fair, who tweeted a photo this week of his recovery from COVID-19. Uh, and in a story about him, NBC reports he's a seemingly healthy 42-year-old who's running 5 to 10 miles a day. And still, uh, there he is in recovery at the hospital. So a lot of groups are looking into what might be driving that, why some people are asymptomatic and others are hit so hard. And they think genetics may play a role. 23andMe is one of those groups. They started a study uh, and now have enrolled more than 500,000 people, 7,000 of whom um, have had COVID-19. And this week, they extended that study to try to focus specifically on people who've been hospitalized with COVID-19. And they're giving away 10,000 free test kits, uh, the genetic test kits, that is, uh, to try to enroll those folks. So joining us now to talk about that effort is 23andMe CEO Ann Wojcicki. And it's great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Tell us about this test. And you started it about a month ago. You're expanding it now. When do you expect to, um, to get results? Yeah, we started it April 6th and we offered just to 23andMe customers to say, have you, um, you know, if you've been exposed or if you want to take the survey to, to take the 23andMe COVID-19 survey, we got half a million people to actually fill out that survey. Almost 8,000 people now actually have said that they have had COVID-19. And because we were rushing to see, can we make a discovery, we decided yesterday, a couple days ago, that we wanted to give out 10,000 kits to anyone who said that they've been hospitalized with COVID-19. And we're really looking to see, are there genetics about susceptibility, so why some people are getting it, and severity. Some people are just super sick. And we're hoping to see, can we find something and can we find something quickly? And in your announcement about the, the study, you mentioned that previous studies have shown that there is some uh, interplay of genetics in terms of susceptibility for other infectious diseases. Um, tell us about just what the precedent is for seeing the genetics uh, role in these kinds of things and whether we've seen studies that have shown any uh, influence of genetics on the severity of infectious disease. Yeah, we actually, there's there's a couple um, that are good examples. So norovirus is one where um, you hear about that sometimes, the cruise ship virus, where there's roughly 20% of the population actually is resistant to that. Um, HIV is another one where there's a well-known mutation called um, CCR5, and people who have that mutation are actually resistant to HIV. So we published a paper. We, we started doing research on infectious diseases. We published a paper a couple of years ago actually looking at um, you know, our customers and a number of diseases like measles. And it gives us optimism that we actually have a good chance of finding something that you know, will show why some people have a more severe case and why some people are more susceptible than others. You also noted in your uh, post about um, expanding the study to folks who are in the hospital that, of course, it is a sensitive situation. Many people are still recovering. Um, how are you handling that kind of outreach? Are you partnering with academic medical centers, with hospitals? How will you find these folks and get the kits to them? A lot of what we're hoping, because you're right, a lot of people are going to be in the hospital. So we're hoping that family members will be able to, um, you know, take advantage of this and then find, you know, when people are out of the hospital, that then they'll be able to help them enroll. Um, we're absolutely interested in partnering with hospitals and academic centers, pretty much anyone who can actually help find the answers here. I feel like this is really, um, in, in some ways, like this is something that has pulled together the entire scientific community. And there's a lot of collaboration happening right now. And we want to just do whatever we can to help. So a couple academic groups have reached out to us, um, you know, some of the, the, the cities with real hotspots. So for instance, New York, um, there's a number of sequencing programs underway. We are committed to publishing our data and, and collaborating with any other group that's out there that wants to be able to pull data together to see, you know, can we find something? 
And you clearly have a lot of participants already. You know, 500,000 people have opted in. Um, but we have been hearing over the past few quarters, you know, from companies like Illumina, which provide the sequencers that do the sequencing, that direct-to-consumer genetics has uh, kind of been on the, the down, a downturn. Uh, fewer people are, are getting these kits. Is that something you've observed? Uh, what are the most recent trends on how interested people are in this? A couple interesting things have happened. There was absolutely a, um, you know, a slowing of the market compared to 2018. Um, you know, 17 and 18, you have this explosion where people were just so interested in their genetics and, and rushing. And I think that you had a number of different factors that played in last year where people want to understand privacy and just understand how their information is being used. And so we've always been um, very transparent with our customers and it's always been a big priority for us to make sure people know um, exactly what they are getting and that they have this opportunity to opt in to research or opt in to DNA relatives. So what we've seen since COVID-19 is that there was an initial um, you know, hit to sales, but it's really come back. And I think that comes from the fact that people realize we're likely to be home for a while. Um, the medical system has has changed. You're not running into the, the doctor's office for routine care. And that it's really important to understand how you can take care of yourself at home. And a good part of what 23andMe does is it gives people information about risks. So what is it that's in your DNA that you're potentially at higher risk for, something like type 2 diabetes? And now is there an opportunity for you to change your behavior and, and actually change um, you know, and prevent a disease. And I think you see a lot of people these days who are interested, more interested than they were in the past in preventing a disease right. because they want to really stay out of the hospital for good reason. Yeah, medicine sure is changing with this. Anne Wojcicki, thank you so much for being with us today. We're eager to hear about the results of your study.